Rick calling in to say hi. <laughs> hey, Rick, what's going on? <laughs> Not much. How you doing? Good. Sorry about that. I wasn't expecting you for a couple of minutes. That's okay. I, I hate to be late. So, well, guys, let's go ahead and welcome Rick Meyer to the show, the former Notre Dame great quarterback, quite a few times on the cover of Sports Illustrated, had a good year, good tenure in the NFL, now owner of Mirror Wines. What was that situation like for you, being behind Tony, learning a lot about Notre Dame? Well, I was lucky. Tony was great to me, and he had done such a good job in 88 with the um, – the national championship season, and there was a lot of great momentum. So um, I had a I had a freshman year where I could kind of watch Tony do his thing and, and learn from him, and, and the pressure wasn't on me. And um, when it became my time, I, I had seen it, you know, operated by a guy who won a lot of ball games. So, uh, you know, as much as you just never know what's going to happen in the future, you just prepare yourself for, for your opportunity. And Tony was kind to me. I couldn't do the things he could do exactly, and and uh, so, but I tried to, and um, I had a couple different strengths. Um, so the offense maybe changed a little bit, but generally, um, Coach Holtz did you know his stuff, and we all had to had to kind of figure out how to participate in it. And, and uh, Tony was a great teacher for me. Weeks ago, we we do a Twitter question for our fans, and we asked them if Notre Dame were to retire any number, what would it be? And quite a few people have responded, actually, with, in fact, the number three, not just talking about you who wore to Ron Palace, but guys like Michael Floyd and Darius Walker and the importance of it. Uh, what would your thoughts be on that? Because I know it came at big controversy. We all talked about it. Or maybe you felt like, would you feel maybe it would be important to have a number three thing be like where Alabama lets their senior leader wear number 12 or USC lets their top linebacker wear 55? Could you see the number three being that for the importance that number has to the university? Well, you know, Montana was as, as big as anybody, I would say, wearing that number, but um, don't forget him. But, um, I, you know, that, it's an interesting, you know, question. There's traditions at, at, at all these schools, and um, it's not something that's been um, really the way it has gone in South Bend. But what I'll tell you, when I picked my number, I was 12 in high school, and I and I and 12 was not available because Ricky Waters was wearing 12, so Holtz um, – suggested that I wear a single digit because all the greats, in his estimation, all the greats at quarterback wore a single digit, um, or almost all, let's say that. But um, So I, I really didn't have a preference between three or four, and, and uh, Dorsey Levins wound up with four, and I was three, and little did I know, you know, as time goes on, there's a lot of history and a lot of, you know, you pass that on to the next guy. So even though there isn't really something uh, officially – uh, done about any particular number. I think the guys who wear the same numbers over the years have have a connection, and uh, it feels like there's one, even though there's nothing set up that way. But uh, I, I doubt anything changes as far as retiring numbers and things like that, because it's just it, it is what it is. And um, you know, you, the numbers of the other guys who've worn your jersey are, and the names of them are, are in your locker. At least that's how it used to be. So you could see see those names, and you were kind of responsible for carrying on what they started. You played, that 91 and 93 was almost kind of an apex of that late 80s, early 90s run with Lou Holtz, where pretty much every roster in those years was all in a future NFL players, a lot of future all pros. You were the NFL's offensive rookie of the year. You know, how competitive were practices for you compared to the game some of the times when you were at Notre Dame? Well, it's funny. You know, I was just talking about that the other day. I mean, there, we had – you know, we had a lot of very competitive games, obviously, but, you know, we felt like practice was as competitive as anything. There, there were All-Americans on both sides of the ball and guys, like you said, that went on and played for years in the NFL. And, um, you know, you're not trying to beat each other's brains out in practice, but you certainly <laughs> want to win the drill if you can, you know. And, and uh, there's good guys covering our best receivers, and there's run, linebackers running with the running backs. And it's it's there were there were guys all up and down. But what was fun was later going through, you know, the first several, you know, actually all the way through the years in the NFL, all 12 seasons, you know, I'd see guys on the other sideline or even on my own team that, that played at Notre Dame or we might have missed each other timing-wise, but there were a lot of us. There were a lot of guys, and, and every weekend I'd see two or three teammates from, you know, from the college days for, for a while there because we had some some draft years where we had, you know, double-digit guys getting getting snagged by teams and playing for – places all over so you know it was fun to kind of stay in touch I mean there's a lot of guys I haven't spoken to away from the field but you feel like you you see them because you a couple Sundays 
every season we'd get a hug and a handshake and see you later. So, you know, we had a we had a pretty we had a pretty fun and deep group of guys those days.